All right. So, hey, this is Jeremiah from Waves. I am joined by my good friends and legendary mixers, Jeff Sandstrom and Lee Fields. Jeff is also joining me here in the room. <laughs> so uh, thanks for being with me today, guys. Legendary? I don't, I don't think that's true. No. Legend in our own minds, maybe, but I don't know about with anybody else. We're on the internet. We can sell it however we want. All the legends that are actually listening are like, are you kidding me right now? (laughs) (laughs) So um, I thought it would be cool if uh, we just talked a little bit today about kind of how the current um, coronavirus quarantine situation has affected uh, the house of worship market and particularly um, the emphasis on live streaming. So I just want to get an idea of what you guys are seeing in your own churches and some of the other guys you were talking to, like, how this has affected people who have been doing this already and how it's affecting people who are maybe just now starting to get into the game uh, of live streaming. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a weird juxtaposition and ironic time, you know, cause a lot of people that are professionals in the audio industry, whether that be house of worship or uh, touring or freelance, you know, it has affected the same group of people very drastically different. So for churches, for example, it's pretty easy to say most churches are busier than they've ever been and are hiring people and are spending resources on equipment. And then for our friends in rental houses and uh, freelance professionals, it is not a good time right now. So yeah. it is very strange to be part of a very large community of people that all do the same thing that, but are experiencing very different things all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that's been interesting is to see how at first, I think there were a lot of churches who thought, well, we'll just do what we normally do and put it online. And if they weren't already sort of thinking about their broadcast mix and their online engagement before COVID-19, they were really kind of struggling to get it happening because you have to think about things differently than you do when there are people in the room. And your mix isn't going to translate the same way as it does when people are in the room. And you're compensating for your PA in different ways, typically, than you do when you're just online. So we've seen a lot of people have great success and we've seen a lot of people really kind of struggle with figuring out how to make their mix and their whole experience as engaging as possible. Yeah. So what kind of adjustments have you found to be uh, the most successful, particularly um, talking about having an empty room where are you using the the PA more to create more energy or are you doing it without the PA to get more isolated mix? Like what's, what's the strategy you're seeing work the best there? You know, it's changing, you know, even what we were recommending to people at first, it's changing because I think we're learning every week what's working and what isn't, but um, we're, you know, the PA is the big one, right? That was one of the first questions people asked, well, should I keep my PA on to add some energy or, or not? And I ended up telling quite a few guys, maybe you should pull that console out of that room and stick it somewhere else, you know? and get the PA out of the, out of the equation entirely, because, you know, you are using headset mics, all of a sudden now you can take your low pass filters or high pass filters lower than you normally would to get a more full sound. You know, the way that you can compress things is different because you're not worrying about feedback, right? It's all about avoiding feedback in a live scenario with um, talking heads. That's a major concern. Yeah. Well, with the PA off, you don't really have to worry about that anymore. So with everything that I'm seeing, it seems to be working and the PA is not really that needed to add energy. You know, the energy is going to come from the performances and the people on stage. And that's one thing that's interesting is, you know, coaching um, the worship leaders and bands that they're going to have to be more engaged in an empty room without people in front of them than they were before. Because even like that translating online, it does not, it does not come across the same at all. So even in the same way um, that they're experiencing that we're seeing that too, with even mixing, you know, it's, 
when you're just looking at tight shots and video of a guitar player, you better make sure you can hear that guitar player in the mix. Yeah. You know, and if there's two singers on stage and not six now, you better make sure you can hear them both. It's more of a duo now and less about a melody and texture of BGVs underneath. At least for us, that's what we're experiencing. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that we've seen who've gone to more tight shots and moved cameras closer to the stage when they are recording so that they can get a more cinematic look or get a more interesting shot because they can not just have this wide shot of an empty stage, but they can actually focus on people. So as they're doing that, I think it's like Lee said, it's way more uh, essential now to make sure that when they do cut to a particular instrument, that it's, it's there and that it's in the mix. But um, that can also, you know, I, th I think because we're, because we have those tighter shots, then we're less expecting to hear the room. So I think we can get away with a little bit less of a room sound uh, than we normally would, would expect. Because if you have a wide shot of a stage, you think, well, they're in this 2000 seat auditorium. Where's, where's the room? Well, now, you, you know, you might, you might need to bring some of it in just because people who normally listen to your stuff online would expect to still hear it. That, yeah. You know, you don't want them to think that they're in a completely different space. But I think for just for focusing on crafting a good mix, um, you know, I think, I think Lee's exactly right. Being able to do less sort of compensating EQ, you know, you can get, a much more natural source, which for a lot of people is a real benefit. Uh, but, you know, I think the mistakes that we're seeing are people who are using their PA too much yeah. and they're, they're not listening on earbuds. They're not monitoring in the car or through computer speakers or all of those things, right? Taking their mix and listening on different reference sources to be able to make sure that it's translating. I think, yeah. you know, if, if you're listening through your big PA with 12 inch drivers and big subwoofers, it's, it's going to be a little more forgiving in a lot of ways than when you stick in earbuds and you go, Oh, where's the bass guitar? Well, if you're only hearing it in the subs in the room, then your bass is going to be gone. So, you know, just trying to coach people to be aware of those kind of things has been really helpful. Yeah, I think there's uh, maybe a big learning curve there for people who haven't done this prior um, of just understanding what happens to a mix when it starts going through encoders and video compression. Um, you know, when I was at Elevation, we used to keep a laptop in the studio uh, that was tuned into the live stream and the output of that laptop was fed back into our studio monitors. And it was about 60 seconds behind, so it was a little disoriented to switch to it, but it was definitely helpful to switch over and just see, oh man, just by going through uh, the encoders and the compression, it's totally changing how my low end is responding or, you know, anything like that. So there's definitely something to be learned through that process. That's really cool. And another thing that we've, that we've really encouraged people to do is don't feel like you have to be quote live streaming. In other words, we're all kind of sheltered in place. A lot of people are recording earlier in the week. Yeah. So let's use those days before the stream goes live on the weekend to really build, a, you know, build our craft and get better and level up on some stuff so that we can figure out, okay, what is this compression really doing when I apply it to my snare drum or my vocal or whatever? And take the time now to, to craft a better experience for people so that it is more engaging. And hopefully when we get back to meeting again in the room with a bunch of people, our craft is going to be even better than it was, you know, back in February. So that's, yeah. that's our hope. Cool. So what's a, um, what's are some of some go to go to tools for you guys? Um, when you're mixing for these kind of broadcasts, whether that is a waves plugin, uh, or something else out there that you think is helpful for people to know about. Uh, L2. <laughs> yeah. It's like the most important thing right now. L2 or, you know, the, the L3 ultra maximizer is like mastering in a box. Right. But volume is so important with online and 
phone. Because if you're on Facebook and you're watching the latest barstool sports video or or whatever, and then you scroll to a guy's church service and the volume's half as loud, I'm just going to just keep going. Yeah. So getting the volume up to the same volume of everything else is really, really important. So we were talking to uh, Ricky Cook at Hillsong and their stream sounds awesome and it's loud. And uh, it was me and Zach Kimmery at Elevation, actually. He was asking like, hey, what do you guys do? Are you measuring luffs or what's the process like? So I asked Ricky and he said, nope, we get it up 0 0.02 dB before distortion strap on an L2 and hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, that's really important is like putting that L2 on the end of your stream, getting it as loud as possible. And then just brick wall in that thing right at the end there. And then, you know, it's like the L3 thing. It's, it is mastering. It's like a, it's like a, a all the mastering you need in one plugin. If you can't afford to have this, your stuff mastered, especially if you need it done in real time. Um, it's really important what that stream's gonna sound like on this little black box right here. Yeah. So like 70% of our audience right now is on mobile. So that's either iPad or iPhone, something like that. And then laptops. So a plugin like that on the end of your chain and stereo bus processing is how you're gonna be able to take your mix and make sure it translates the best that it can be. So you know, people ask a lot in live sound with big PA, do you use bus compression? Or are you doing stuff on your two bus? And a lot of guys do and a lot of guys don't. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. But with this, I think you got to I think you have to have compression on your your two bus. Like, does anyone make records without mastering? Right? No. You know, right. So it's kind of similar in, in this type of thing. Yeah. And I, I would add, make sure that if you're not doing the if you're not doing that right now and you do want to add that as a tool record some stuff and practice with it because you know if you just think well I'm just going to get this thing super loud and bring that threshold way down and it's doing its thing sometimes depending on which one you're using and which preset it can get overdone pretty quickly so if you if you hear it really pumping or if you hear the release kind of not letting go like you think it should, you know, you might want to just play with it a little bit. Make sure you understand the tools uh, before you just sort of jump right in with both feet. But I will say one of the things that I love about Waves plugins in general is that the preset menu is such an intuitive place to start. So if you're, if you're hip to that, then you already know this. But for those of you guys who are maybe diving into Waves for the first time, you know, one of my favorite presets in the um, L2 and L3. There's a preset called High Res CD Master. I mean, that's just a great place to start to go, okay, this is what it sounds like. It's if I were going to make a record master to go to replication, this is kind of a good starting point for those kind of, you know, levels. So yeah. just um, don't be afraid of the, of the preset menu, you know, under the load, just there's usually a dozen or so different things to choose from and just turn it till it sounds good. But yeah. make sure you make sure you have a way to rehearse before you just start applying six, yeah, 10, 12 dB of gain reduction. Cause you never know how that's going to translate on the other side because the provider, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Spotify or your internet provider is also going to do some sort of compression just to get it to right. the, the receiver. So be aware of what's happening there too. Yep. Yeah. The other big one is auto tune and waves tune. Um, it, most of us in churches around the world, they don't have professional singers and an out of tune vocal at 95 DB and a PA is one thing, but when everyone in the room quiet, is singing along out of tune anyway, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but when you're just listening on a phone or a laptop, it sounds worse. It's yeah. more noticeable on smaller speakers so really, really consider and push for uh, getting some type of tuning plug-in for your band. It is very important. And use the key feature. You really dial that in. You don't want it to sound like T-Pain, or maybe you do. Like, maybe <laughs> there is a time for that. But, you know, you can't overdo it, but it can really, really help. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing I would say just generally 
because you don't have the sound of the room like you do when everybody's in the room, um, really be attentive to what's happening with your effects. So I think, you know, there are certain circumstances where you're going to maybe need more reverb than you normally would live because this vocal is just coming at you bone dry and it's super exposed. And if there are flaws in the performance, it's really hard to fix it. You know, a card laid is a card played in a lot of ways. And so to make sure to add some extra verb and maybe, you know, swim it out a little bit so that you can make, you know, you give the the feeling of it being in some space, I think is, is you're probably going to end up using more than you would live. So don't be afraid of that. Yeah. And you'll use different reverbs than you would have live. You yeah. know, a lot of times we're choosing reverb or you're at least manipulating the reverb to sound a certain way in your room. So, you know, ambience on H delay on my snare drum in my room may sound one way, but then on the broadcast mix, it may not come across the same. So you really got to relook at everything when it comes to broadcast. You know, for most churches, I think broadcast has been like the whipped cream and cherry on the Sunday and the core really being the weekend service and what was happening in the room. Well, it's not that way anymore. Now it's only online. So how many decisions can we make? How many processes can we change quickly to make that the priority and then forget about what we were doing live? So, you know, you really want to try and prioritize that stuff, uh, change the stuff that will make the biggest impact on the stream which to me, the first one was turning the PA off, right? Yeah. I kept talking about that, but that was, that was a huge one. And then another one is uh, your stage plot may have been because you needed to fill a 50 foot stage or you're making all kinds of decisions, where the cameras are, where the lights are, all of that. Well, now all that's gone. You can put the cameras where you want. You can put whatever different types of microphones on stuff. Maybe you can isolate, maybe you can do overdubs and the mics don't matter. Like everything is on the table now. Yeah. And a couple other things I would say, you know, from a programming standpoint, don't feel like you have to do everything that you normally would on a Sunday with a room full of people. You know, if you, if, if you find that, you know, it's going to be really effective for one of your worship leaders to sing by themselves with an acoustic guitar and it's delivered really well and it sounds great then maybe that's your worship set for a weekend, or maybe it's for a song. You know, don't feel like you have to have 13 people on stage the way you used to. Now, a lot of us can't um, have that many people on stage, but, you know, don't be afraid to scale things down um, to be effective. And then in terms of just the mix itself, another thing that I have found is I'm, I'm tending to add a lot more top end than I normally would live. Again, because of having to deal with feedback issues in a PA when you don't have that, you know, I, I want to hear maybe more of that sparkle than I, than I could get away with in a live setting with a loud PA. So, um, you know, I, I, going back to the studio days for me, it was always important to listen to some really good reference tracks that I really knew really well and try to match what I'm trying to create in my, you know, online mix to what I'm hearing in those recordings. And I bet that for most people, they're going to be lacking in the amount of high mid and high frequency information. So yeah. don't, so don't you, be afraid of that. Are you adding that on a per track basis or are you doing that on your master bus or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. You know, yeah. I'm um, for sure like some stuff that I might cut out of hi hat or cymbals live in the room. I might be adding some of that back in just to get some of that shimmer and some of that sparkle that you would normally get just naturally from the stage, either in a vocal mic or whatever. Um, and then even in vocals, I think just adding more, adding more top end to the EQ of the vocals. But then as part of the master fader, uh, that processing chain for me will have some EQ in it as well. So I might just do a little, just a little shaping of the overall mix where I normally wouldn't do that um, in the room because typically my DSP for my PA itself is doing that to kind of tone the PA for the room. Yeah. So when you, when you don't have that, then you might need to have that on your, on your two bus. Cool. So 
uh, I guess just to kind of wrap up, how do you guys see this affecting house of worship market and house of worship engineers uh, going forward, like for the next several months, and then even after all this is over with, like there's going to be a new emphasis on live streaming. Um, and it's kind of cool to see the church leverage technology to, to keep things going in a time like this, but how do you see it changing after all this is over? Uh, I think it's a massive change. I think what a lot of the younger tech savvy communications staff has been saying for years now, now senior leadership is going, uh, okay, let's, let's do what you said. And then now we're a few weeks in and they're going, oh my gosh, you're right. So yes. like our weekend attendance has grown six, six X over the last three weekends of what oh, it wow. is on a normal weekend. And when we start talking about volunteers and giving, all of that is also up because of online engagement and reach. And it's just possibilities like we didn't know existed. So because of that, I think those broadcast audio suites are going to get uh, approved. I think HD camera systems are going to all of a sudden get approved. We're going to get more tech staff. There's a, um, there's a guy who hosts a church leadership podcast. His name's Kerry Newhoff. Probably no one listening has ever heard of it. And that is okay. Um, but last week on his podcast, he goes out to like 200,000 church leaders. He said, we are approaching the day when 25 to 40% of the church resources are spent on technology to help get the mission out and um, further the gospel. So that is a giant shift where we were like, you know, five to 10% before in some cases. So we're talking like a five X difference on things like, you're going to see ads on Facebook for churches to come watch our service and to be a part of what we're doing in our communities. I mean, it is absolutely going to revolutionize everything we've done. Wow. Yeah. There's definitely no sort of back to normal with normal being what it used to be. Right. I think even when the dust has settled and we do go back to gathering in person again, I don't think it's going to look like it did back in January. Um, the churches that were already doing this well, are going to continue to do it well and they're going to continue to learn from their peers and just keep pushing. And then I think those of us who may have been lagging behind are going to be able to look to them for best practices and tips and tricks that can kind of take, you know, our experience and stretch our teams to be even more engaging. And I think, you know, the, the most exciting thing for me is actually how we can continue to engage when we're not meeting. I think the, the idea of sort of midweek experiences and maybe a daily experience for some people, or, you know, how do we keep people sort of tracking with us so that their church experience is not just an hour and a half on Sundays, yeah. but that it's an ongoing relationship that happens online. I think it's super exciting. Yeah, that's cool. Well, uh, I really appreciate you guys and all of the um, insight and content that you guys have been putting out uh, through MXU and other avenues. Um, do you want to give a quick plug for the MXU site? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook. It's MXU Rocks. And then we've got an online library of on-demand training videos for audio, video and lighting now. So that library just crossed 200 videos. Um, you can check that out on our website. It's www.mxu.rocks. Cool. And you guys have some content on the Waves website as well, where you're doing some training and we uh, do, some yep. other helpful tips. So uh, really appreciate you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. And, Thanks, uh, Jeremiah. Yep. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right.